activist and ENCA's resident crime analyst, Yusuf Abramji, will be looking at the big stories of the week, trends, modus operandi, and bring you some safety tips. Thank you so much for your time this evening, Yusuf. We do appreciate it. I'm looking forward to this discussion every Sunday night. I want us to uh, focus firstly on kidnappings for ransom. They have been making headlines for some time, uh, for months now, actually. And what's very important is that police have made some inroads. We do know that last week an alleged kingpin and five others were actually arrested in uh, Linasia outside of Johannesburg. Maybe take us through this particular breakthrough and how significant it is. Good evening, Heidi. Thank you. We're looking forward to the weekly crossings as well. Uh, indeed, kidnappings have been in the news. Uh, we spoke a number of times uh, on the various shows about kidnappings. This is where people are taken for ransom. So we've had a number of high-profile kidnappings of business people. Uh, the video we are now seeing was an incident in Linasia where a uh, tobacco dealer was taken, Yasin Biko, uh, and uh, he was released after some ransom was paid uh, a few weeks uh, later. We've had a number of these incidents, and during a operation uh, on Thursday evening, just uh, under two weeks ago, police uh, raided a number of houses in Lawley, south of Johannesburg, in the Nasha South, uh, and also earlier in Weinstein. That is where Fredo Chalus, uh, age 43, African and both the big national was taken into custody by uh, Tadia. Uh, another South African national, Ahmed Ibrahim Ilias, uh, was also taken into custody. And this particular gang, a uh, total of six arrests, uh, are now linked to at least four kidnappings, an illegal AK 47, a uh, handgun was found in the house. Police also highly confiscated six million rand in mm -hmm. cash. That was allegedly some of the money or the money paid by one of the victims still wrapped in the same packages uh, where the drop-off was made. And we know that um, a businessman from the Deer, uh, he was uh, Zahir Asmal, he was also taken uh, in March. Police freed him during an operation as well. Uh, and um, this particular gang is also linked to the kidnapping of the son of a wealthy Mozambican businessman, uh, Jair Abdullah. He was taken in October last year on the N-17 while he was uh, coming towards Benoni, where three vehicles fitted with blue lights stopped him. Uh, his friend was also taken but released, and he was free during a police operation uh, in Heidelberg uh, sometime during November. So this gang has been labeled dangerous, uh, and they are back in court tomorrow. They appeared uh, in a Lanesia court last week. The case was postponed to the Protea Magistrates Court in Soweto, and they'll be applying for bail tomorrow. Uh, I may add that Shalus was arrested a number of times previously, uh, on other uh, charges, so it will be interesting to see how this bail application unfolds. Certainly, yeah. I was going to ask you with regards to their court appearance, and I think it's a significant move, um, the fact that they have been arrested. And I remember those images that were actually released of um, the cash. I just couldn't believe all that cash that was actually found, uh, and, and they were found in possession of that, of that money. Uh, I want us to maybe move over to the modus operandi that these kidnapping syndicates have, because we've seen kidnapping after kidnapping, and one that's going to stick with me for a very long time, and I think most South Africans is the Morty brothers because you started seeing how um, younger uh, kids were also now being targeted because uh, they were trying to, we still don't know, but possibly exploit money out of uh, the richer families. So what is the modus operandi that we're seeing with these kidnapping syndicates? Well, they're targeting people, uh, wealthy people of Indian origin, uh, South African Indians, uh, Pakistanis, Somalis, Bangladeshis, uh, and even people from Mozambique and other neighboring countries. So what they would normally do, Heidi, is to follow their suspects quietly, keep surveillance, and then suddenly pounce with heavily armed gunmen in a number of vehicles, keep them hostage for sometimes up to months until they demand anything from 3 million to 10, 15 million. Uh, you mentioned the Morty brothers case. In that particular case, no arrests have been made. We know there was speculation at the time that the ransom of 50 million rand was paid, but I subsequently been able to, to check on that. Uh, in fact, the amount was much less, in fact, under 10 million rand, I'm told. So there seems to be a lot of misinformation also going around. But these gangs uh, are most certainly highly dangerous, uh, highly sophisticated. We have a number of the copycat gangs, but I think the arrest of Shalouz uh, and his particular co-accomplices most certainly is a significant breakthrough in the fight against kidnappings and organized crime. Uh, we know that uh, eight vehicles have since been seized by the police. 
At the weekend, police uh, raided a number of uh, areas around Lanesha. They found bulletproof jackets. And I'm told by police insiders that when Shalud was arrested uh, at his house in Lanesha, so the luxury house on my head, he was found hiding in the cupboard in his bedroom. Uh, police also uh, earlier made a bust in Brimston where they found Mandrax tablets, and I now believe that this particular gang of Shalus is also being linked to the Brimston gang uh, ID. Mm, I'm just glad that arrests are being made because that's always worrying. Uh, I do understand now that ENCA actually has exclusive audio where kidnappers uh, are making demands after a victim was taken. Let's just listen in. I'm a butcher. I will cut him. I'm a butcher. I work with people. I kill people. Did you tell you that you, the, time, the place that I put it in, he, I kill two people there. You see the blood everywhere. You can ask him. You want me to give you? You want me to give him the phone that you can ask everything. What is he saying? No, ask? I'm begging. I'm begging of you, please, please. Listen, brother. You are not talking with God here. I'm not the the, the, the guy to beg. You can't beg me. I'm not a god. I'm not condolating to you. Up until you give me my money, or you get your body, you pray to Allah or whatever you pray to to, to, to bear it. What is that? But I don't have money. Where I'm do? Where I'm rob for someone? Where I'm go to rob for someone? You have to look for someone. What do you say? Okay, give me time till tomorrow. I try my best. <laughs> That is so scary, Yusuf. I'm a butcher. I mean, how inhumane. Um, maybe speak to us about uh, police making uh, inroads when it comes to kidnappings in general. I may add, uh, Heidi, that particular audio was from a kidnapping in Cape Town just recently. The victim was subsequently released. He was beaten, uh, beaten up and the family were forced to pay a ransom. Also, we have another active kidnapping case in the Cape Town area where a businessman is still missing. I'm told that the police are busy investigating. So we know that the kidnapping task team uh, was revamped just a few months ago, headed by crime intelligence, a Major General Firoz Khan. Uh, is now in charge of the entire uh, uh, unit. They, they have made significant breakthroughs. We've seen a number of the smaller gangs being arrested. Some of them, very unfortunately, have been given bail by the courts of law to the criminal justice system. is still a problem, but a number of these arrests have been made, and I'm quite confident that over the next few months, I think we're going to see more arrests being made. I think this particular unit needs more resources. Their, their capacity needs to be beefed up, and I know that the Minister of Police is on record as saying that the uh, Kidnappings now has become a priority crime, but the statistics show that we've had a number of kidnappings over the past few months, especially from the middle part of last year, and most of them are from ransom, although people are very often taken uh, hostage during hijackings, but they are released once the vehicle tracking device has been stripped off and once the car has, uh, has been cleared and so on. Mm. I think the fact that that unit was established, Yusuf, it has made a significant impact already. It just goes to show that when there are more units that can be established of this nature, we can actually uh, just try and fight crime. I want us to move over to cash and transit robberies. They seem to be carrying on with attacks on cash vans almost every single week. Uh, one would think that that massive arrest that happened a while ago uh, would scare off these attacks, but it seems not. What is the latest? Indeed, the footage we are now looking at, ID was a CIT robbery that took place in Sashankove, north of Pretoria. And as you can see, these robbers are daring, they are brazen, they come heavily armed. We see how the vehicles are attacked, uh, they are bombed, they are set on fire. We know that uh, the gangs use a number of vehicles. Uh, there have been some breakthroughs, but the statistics which I've just received from the Cash and Transit Association of South Africa indicate that last year alone, we had 314 attacks across South Africa. It was up 8% over the previous year. In the first quarter of this year, we've also had an average of one CIP robbery, one attack on a cash van almost every day. And they're also becoming more and more violent. We've had one or two guards being killed, we had a policeman being killed, and we know there was a big shootout in Rosettenville uh, in Johannesburg just a few weeks ago where uh, eight or nine or ten suspects were shot dead by police. So police are making some inroads but these gangs are becoming more dangerous, uh, and the patterns show that they also targeting on certain days. So Mondays are very popular, Fridays are popular, and uh, just on the N4 outside Pretoria, just over a week ago, 
during um, uh, the late afternoon uh, uh, peak hour traffic, we saw a gang attacking a cash van, again, right on our by byways, right in, um, in, in busy freeways. They, they absolutely do not care where they attack, and even in shopping centers, we know it happens all the time. Yes, definitely. Maybe speak to us about uh, police and CIT companies. Do you think they are doing enough to uh, try and fight uh, the scourge? I think most certainly over the past few months we've seen uh, police uh, beefing up their operations. I think the CIT companies are desperate. They are trying. We know there are three major operators in South Africa, namely Fidelity, G4S and uh, SBB Security. G4S has been the hardest hit. Uh, and I think much more still needs to be done. Uh, these companies really need to invest more money into security, into technology, into resources. But I think the police, again, you talk of special units. Uh, Heidi, uh, I think CIT robberies is one such crime where a special unit uh, needs to be brought in to fight the scourge. We are now told that dedicated teams are being appointed, and I think even this, uh, the, the security, the trans CIT security themselves have made a call for specialized units to be brought in to fight the skirt, but a lot of work still needs to be done. Do you think that uh, more technology needs to be used, Yusuf? Because many would say, you know, up your security, up technology, because that can assist you in identifying, number one, the suspects, but also actually seeing their modus operandi, seeing what they use, seeing how they do things. Most certainly, technology is the future. We know that uh, there's a system called the PUDI, uh, PUDU, the poor polyurethane system, which is developed in South Africa, it freezes or it uh, closes the money up immediately, a, uh, a button is pressed. Uh, that has been a deterrent. We know cameras, uh, which some of the vehicles have monitored 24-7, is a deterrent. So I think a lot of these companies need to invest in technology and also physically beef up the security. We know the air support has been uh, increased over the last few months. We know the eyes and ears campaign, an initiative of... Uh, 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 of business uh, unity South Africa as well as business leadership South Africa and uh, the uh, associations have made a difference so most certainly technology is the future and it must be embraced by the industry uh, themselves. And then maybe just lastly uh, Yusuf we often see members of the community and the public going forward uh, when you do see the, these cash and transit attacks trying to pick up the money after but the gangs normally flee these crime scenes before the police arrive. How dangerous is this and what safety tips can you offer for those that have the urge to go and pick up this money and possibly be tampering with the crime scene? I think it is extremely dangerous. We've seen these viral videos where people search forward the minute the robbers leave and they go for the remains of the loot. They pick up whatever they can from the crime scenes. First of all, um, these vans are often, uh, uh, the explosives are used, so they could be, could be very, very serious. The explosives could go off. Secondly, they are contaminating the crime scene, which is a crime in itself, and pick up, picking up the loot is a crime on itself. So my advice very often is, even if you're at a shopping center and you see a cash van, stay clear. Uh, if, for example, you drive into a cash in transit robbery, stay in your vehicle, do not climb off. These people use uh, heavy weapons, they, keep, uh, they uh, open fire. Uh, if you can move away from the scene, move away as quickly as you can. But my appeal to the members of the public is, picking up cash at a crime scene is a crime in itself. You are contaminating the crime scene and you make it very difficult for the police to investigate because the entire crime scene gets contaminated. So stay clear is my advice, uh, Heidi. Mm, certainly. I've told you this before, uh, Yusuf. When I see those cash vans, I literally run for my life because I get so worried uh, that something might just happen because it just seems these cash and transit attacks are, are increasing on a daily basis. But thank you so much for your insights and, your, and uh, that update, Yusuf. We'll speak to you next week, Sunday.